There's some uh, reactions from CNN correspondents and anchors that are covering the, the, the rail strike. And again, none of the people that you're going to hear from in this compilation have probably ever worked a job where they don't get A, paid sick leave, or even sick leave. Just want to be clear on that. There's no sick leave. Not just not paid. If they get, if they take more than three days off because they're sick in a year, they get fired. I've heard that uh, CNN also gives employees um, uh, memberships to the uh, uh, gym. What's the really expensive gym here in New York? Um, Crunch? I don't oh, know. Crap, I, I forgot no. what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's one that Ricky Gervais goes to. But if you're CNN, you get to go to... Um, I can't. I bet you there's a lot of wellness. I got to be honest. I, I haven't belonged to a gym in uh, well, forever-ish. Somewhere around there. Um, but here is, a, here is a compilation of CNN covering this. Just get a sense of, like, uh, of, of what they're up for. A rail strike is one of the most disruptive and expensive things that can happen to an economy. A rail shutdown or strike would disrupt supply chains. A strike means food prices could skyrocket. Many experts are saying would be an economic catastrophe. That could mean a big shortage and massive price hikes. Even gas prices could increase. And it also could cost the economy a billion dollars within the first week. That would cripple the economy. I'm not setting aside the concerns of your members, but uh, are you and your members sorry. willing to stop the rail? in effect uh, and and accept those costs to the US economy do you believe a strike is worth it if it cripples the US economy and costs up to two billion dollars a day more than two billion dollars per day is it worth it and on top of all of that the holidays are right around the corner so a little less than a month right before Christmas here especially right before the holidays President Biden warning if that happened it would devastate the economy if we had a strike like that. So joining me now to talk about this and a lot more is Bank of America. It's Brian Moynihan, chairman and CEO, one of the biggest yeah. banks in the world. I mean, that's amazing. It's the stinking woke media. It, it, they're so, it, they're so, so woke, these guys. I mean, just to give you a sense of like you know, the different ways you could frame this, right? I mean, well, first off, in many respects, shouldn't they also be blaming the entire country? Like everybody who's not working for the railways? Like, why aren't you working for the railways? I mean, like, do, do, do they react this way to when the Fed uh, raises interest rates? Right. No, of course not. I mean, the, the idea that um, this is being framed is if the strike, as opposed to like, I mean, you can just imagine this way, another way you could frame it, is denying workers a couple of days of sick leave worth $2 billion a day? Right. And then Bi if Biden just said that, this entire calculus would be changed. I, I, I mean, it, it, it seems, I, I don't think it would, I, I think you would still get pushback, but it would, it, it would immediately, if Biden had come out and reframed that, this in that way. I mean, Bernie Sanders is doing it, but, but if Biden had come out right. and said, look, the economy is too important. Never mind, like, you know, like, if it's not enough to simply say, like, hey, don't you think, hey, hey, Jack, don't you think that we should have uh, four days of sick leave or seven days of sick leave for workers? Or, you know, never mind, just, you know, but again, paid sick leave, like, like, they should be able to be sick. We should allow human beings to be sick and not punish them for that. You could also just frame it in like, we can't have these huge monopolies that are making billions upon billions upon billions of dollars in profit. Record-breaking profits are going to sacrifice the economy because they don't want to pay for their workers when they're sick. Imagine that question on CNN to like a railroad executive. Or even like the Bank of America CEO. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it really is nuts. But that's that's where we're at. And contact your congressperson right now. Do we have a, a phone number, Bradley? Can you grab me a phone number for uh, for like the the general? Um, 
switchboard for Congress, call right now, ask for your congressperson, and say, I want you to vote for the paid sick leave for railway workers. The uh, Capitol switchboard is 202-224-3121. That's 202-224-3121. 202-224-3121. Just call. Very quick call. Ask for your congressperson. Hi. Just want to make sure that you're voting in favor of paid sick leave. For the railway workers. That's all you got to say. There's absolutely no reason why. And, and, and there's going to be a half a dozen or a dozen... Maybe 30 Democrats. I don't know. It, it's going to be interesting to see how many of them will vote against that bill. Because, again, if that if bu they can vote for the deal for the president and vote for the, um, the paid sick leave, and that ends up as one package in the Senate. That ends up being an up or down vote on both of uh, on those provisions. It gets fused, is my understanding anyways. And so uh, it's a big deal. I'm not sure if we where Rubio's at, but yesterday John Cornyn squawked about uh, supporting uh, paid leave for rail workers. Today he's saying, I just think it's a bad idea for Congress to try to intervene and renegotiate these con uh, contracts. So he's no longer a Republican who might help us out on this. So that was just, oh, yeah, no, wow, yeah. it looked like it never was going to happen. <laughs> this morning, I, I was listening to, as I do every morning, some of the AP news, and they had a quote from McCarthy, and he came on and he goes, like, I can't believe this. Uh, that like he he was against this uh this vote and i thought like oh geez are they is he really going to come out in favor of the workers and it was um no instead it 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 makes it look like there's a really bad economy <laughs> <laughs> this is so like nonsensical um, they can't do it we might like all, all the folks who think we might get a realignment somehow like here's their chance now that the, I mean that was a big movement like ten years ago, uh, like Ray Han, I can't remember his name, and oh yeah, uh, there was another guy. Um, they were trying to Ray Han Salam, I think it was, and there was one other the guy. National Review guys. Yes, and they were they were trying to sort of have a working class Republican, and that went nowhere, and then it just became instead of really working class, let's just make it um, the working class aesthetic. Yeah. But instead of actual material Which interest, is what Joe Biden does, kind of. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right, folks. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, head into the fun half. Just a reminder, it's your support that makes this show possible. You can become uh, a member. Jointhemajorityreport.com. Jointhemajorityreport.com. When you do, you not only help the show survive and thrive, but you also get the free half free of commercials, and you get the fun half. 